Hello, I'm Sarah, and I'm a board certified behavior analyst. I make videos about applied behavior analysis or ABA. I normally make videos explaining different ABA concepts and techniques, but today we're going to go a different route. I'm interviewing this gentleman, Sam Mitchell, um, and with him also is his mother, Gina. So Sam is in college, majoring in media and entrepreneurship. He has been podcasting since high school and has his own podcast called Autism Rocks and Rolls. He wants to change the world's perspective on autism and remove the stigma around it. He wants to help people on the spectrum and people in general that feel like they don't belong because they feel different. He's also a motivational speaker and offers podcast coaching and editing services, collaborative educational writing services, sponsorship opportunities, and support for businesses that seek to employ people on the spectrum or others that have disabilities. He loves dogs, the outdoors, spending time with his family, creative writing, blogging, zip lining, traveling, and WWE. Welcome, Sam and Gina. I'm so happy to get to chat with you today. Thank you. It's good to be here. Awesome. All right. Are you ready for me to dive into these questions? Go ahead. Okay. So question one, um, everyone with autism seems to experience it at least a little bit differently. What is your own experience of having autism? Uh, my experience basically started when I was younger and basically started when I was four, not liking fireworks and very loud noises and any noises that you see at a zoo or at a water park was very bothersome and disheartening for me. Yeah, pretty overwhelming. Kind of, how, do, how do things progress from there as you got older? It has progressed because I'd say it doesn't bother me as much and I can go to a water park. But there are some sensory feelings I still don't like. I'm never going to wear a wet t-shirt. Good luck getting me that on. And good luck trying to get me um, a shirt with a hole in it. Oh, no. I'm not a big fan of that either. How would you say, like, what helped you kind of progress through those things? Family, I would probably definitely for sure say that I guess just not doing it and not being around a t-shirt with a hole or a wet t-shirt. Yeah. Putting it on. On your website, it says that you are successful with autism and that you are differently abled, not disabled. Can you describe what that means to you? Well, it means to me that I'm just, an or I'm an ordinary man, but I may function at a different level. I may function in a different way and get through the day differently than any other man or woman. Yeah, absolutely. My biggest question, the one I'm most excited to ask you about, um, is who are some people that you know of that have autism that inspire you and why is that? Um, Temple Grandin. She is very autistic, but she's also changed the world in the agricultural world so many ways. I'm a huge fan of Dr. Grandin. I would love to meet her one day. She's brilliant. Absolutely wonderful. And the fact that she advocates for animals is like the biggest thing for me. It's it's so awesome. And we also have, and also we have Mick Foley, who's not autistic, but his son is. And he's just very understanding of people and Anyone he believes like me, anyone has a chance and he believes in redemption. The so Anthony Iani who came to our gala yesterday. He was an alumni basketball player in Michigan who has PDD and autism. And he was there and he's a pretty cool guy, but he's, he, he won't stop at anything. And he'll play basketball, I think, till his death. That's awesome. So Sam um, and Gina, what would you want other people who provide autism related services? So um, ABA, OT, PT, speech teachers, what would you want them to know about your experience with autism? Uh, I want them to know that my experience consists of a messy but wonderful journey. Yeah. That's what I was going to say from a teacher standpoint, I'm a teacher. I've been an educator for 17 years. And the biggest thing that I would say is that everybody on the spectrum wants a friend. And I think that teachers need to be really, really mindful of that. And if they notice, if they notice somebody, you know, sitting alone in the cafeteria or absolutely having no friends that needs to be addressed whether they're on the spectrum or not. And that is the big, biggest advice of teachers. Um, I think that most teachers do that, but I think we get so busy that we might make a mental note of it that, oh, this person, you know, they really don't have any friends and then we get really busy. But that, I think that has to be pushed into the forefront of what educators do. So that's the biggest thing I would say. I definitely agree with that. Uh, I work with 
with students with autism, both in schools and homes and communities. And I will say that sometimes just having somebody there to listen to and talk to and share interests with can make a huge difference regardless of what services you're receiving. So definitely. Um, related question. What about people who don't provide autism related services? So not teachers or anything like that, but people who share communities with people diagnosed with autism. So neighbors, fellow churchgoers, fellow students and coworkers. What would you say to them, Sam? So I would say that they can work within themselves and the others can work within themselves too. Yeah, and that's, that is important. Um, it's just education. You know, if a church or if neighbors or if other families don't provide services, they might just not understand. They might not understand what it is and how important it is. So I think it's just you know, we have a nonprofit now. So Sam, we've gone beyond the podcast. So about six months ago, we're at 50, at a 501c3 federal level. And that's, that's a huge part of uh, Sam's mission and our advocacy work that we do um, is just to, to educate people and to show people that, you know, Sam's very successful, but part of that success is because he has autism. You know, no, we don't want to take away autism. Autism is not a, it isn't a, a negative condition, you know, that people have, you know, we feel like even uh, people on low on the spectrum, because, you know, it's a really big spectrum. I don't look at them as being just, you know, not worthy of society. They're, everybody contributes and success is measured in a lot of different ways. So I think that people that don't know that or people that don't have the services for that, I think that we just need to tell them. <laughs> we need to spread, you know, spread that message. Absolutely. Start having those conversations. And I agree with you that autism can, um, autism can be kind of a superpower, like the way Temple Grandin uses her visual thinking, which she says is um, kind of a unique trait of some people with autism, is the reason why she was able to do the work that she did and make those changes in the agricultural industry that she did. So um, I completely agree yeah, on that. Yeah, absolutely. She, uh, we know Temple really well. Um, we love Temple. She actually was our guest speaker yesterday at our gala. And so she's, um, she's an incredible human being. And, you know, she'll say, she'll be the first to say, I couldn't do what I do if I didn't have autism. But my autism isn't the same as Sam's autism or the next person's autism you know, Sam is kind of a visual thinker, but he doesn't, he, he learns from what I have seen more with words and writing and, and things. So um, it's, it's, every, the, you know, people on the spectrum are different than, but so are we, there's no. You always say different than what? Yeah. I'm always, you know, we, we've had a lot of people um, in the past say Sam's different and that's okay. And there's no harm in the statement and they're trying very hard to be accepting. But my question is, but what is he different from? I don't know what they're saying. Like me, of course, he's different than me. Of course, he's different than you. So even saying that somebody with autism is different still puts somebody that doesn't have autism, in my opinion, up kind of on a pedestal. It's okay that you're different than me, but they're still here. And why can't we just say we're humans and let's just be, let's just be here, you know, and that that's a huge part of, of his mission as well. I love that. Just accepting one another, regardless of label or diagnosis and just being kind yeah. to each other. So important. Next question is, and this is definitely open to both of you. What would you say to a parent who just has found out that their child has autism and might be feeling overwhelmed or worried? Can you kind of describe your journey through that? Yeah, I can say the first thing is take a breath. First of all, I mean, it's not death sentence, it's a gift. I always say that because it's true. But in my opinion, I do understand like the panicking because as you said, you didn't sign up for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say from a, a parent standpoint, there's no wrong way to react. And nobody, I don't think any parent, uh, mother or father, aunt, grandma, whoever's, you know, raising the child can beat themselves up as to how they react. There's no right or wrong way to react. Um, I was very upset. You know, Sam turned four, we knew he probably had it, but then when we got the official diagnosis, I was very upset, I was very scared. And, and I was bitter that this is, 
this is not the path that I envisioned. And that's, I don't, I didn't say that I'd do this. <laughs> I mean, it sounds really harsh, but that was my feeling for a very short period of time. It was very short lived. And then once we did the research and I knew a little bit about it being a teacher, but I, I would say you just embrace it no matter what. And it's easier, it's easier said than done. And I, and I totally understand that, you know, we have gotten flack with our advocacy work. And I've talked to parents who have nonverbal children and uh, that are very low, low functioning. And so life is very, very stressful. I, I, I'm not, I can't walk in their shoes and I cannot. The only thing we're an expert in at Autism Rocks and Rolls Corporation is our story. That's it. I'm an educator, Sam is a college student with autism, but as far and as- And the electrician. Yeah, his dad is a union maintenance electrician. We have our skills, we have what we're doing, but we also really believe in humanity. And we believe that everybody on the spectrum, regardless of ability, is worth it and enough. And that's, that is what we want to spread. Um, and like I said, we've gotten, I've gotten very, very nasty messages, you know, on Facebook and particular Facebook groups that says you and that doctor, you and that doctor, you don't understand what you're talking about because my child's nonverbal, yours isn't. It's not a competition. It's no, not, it's, not, no, it's a not a competition for compassion or empathy. To see who's more disabled. That's not what we're here. But I, what I truly believe in is even the person that's nonverbal that has to be, you know, totally taken care of. They're human, they're a human being and they're worth it to society. And I think we have to recognize that. I definitely agree. Okay. My next question is after receiving the autism diagnosis for Sam, Gina, can you please describe your journey from being upset and bitter, as you had said, through watching Sam learn and grow and become the kind, driven, and successful man he is today? Yeah, um, I sure will. The, like I said, it was very short-lived. It was more of a, you know, we kind of suspected that he had it, but then when it was confirmed, it just became more real and very scary. So it was, I, I mean, literally just a few days to where it took, it took a while for my mind, you know, to wrap around it. But it was very quickly that I, that I realized Sam was Sam before we got the official diagnosis. And after the official diagnosis, nothing had changed. He, he had autism. He had, when his brain was developing in the womb, it developed to have autism. And nothing I did and nothing I said and nothing that happened environmentally, in my opinion, affected that. It was just genetic. It's neurological. And of course I blame myself. You know, I thought I didn't do enough. And then I know that I did. I mean, I, he listened to music when he was in the womb. I read stories to him. And when he was delayed in speech, I made, you know, cork boards of pictures and we practice with the sounds and phonics and I'm, I'm an English teacher. So I, I, I did everything that I could. So it, but at first I thought that's it. Like, it's me. Like I did, did something wrong and it took a while to understand that of course that I didn't, but I think it was very quickly that I saw Sam is Sam, nothing has changed. And we, you know, Sam is, has the capability to be successful and we're going to go down a different path, but every parent goes down a different path. There's no path the same when you raise a child it's 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 really no different it is different because he has autism but there's some some other mother there's some similarities out there yeah there's some other mother out there father aunt whoever you know dad raising a child and they're they're have a, something else going on that we have no idea about everybody has their own story so it's just part of ours but it was very quickly that I knew whatever Sam does, whether it be working somewhere, going into the workforce, earning money, whatever, I knew that he could be successful at something. And, you know, he is. So it was pretty quick to know that. Any child who has a parent in their corner that, that believes like my child can be successful, regardless of label, like I said before, or diagnosis, any child that has a parent that um, is in their corner saying that, 
is set up for success in a way. Um, so that's really, really awesome that you didn't see that as, as a barrier to success. Right. Yeah. And success, like I said, is defined in so many different ways. That was, you just have to be the nice luxuries that America gives every day. Yeah. It's not the white picket fence. It's not like, it's not that. It's not the limo. (laughs) Nope. I've ridden in a limo once in my life. So it's not the, you know, the picket fence and it's just, isn't, that isn't, that isn't reality. Our reality is we are blessed and have the privilege of having a home him yeah a home and having to get to call him my son that is that is a privilege to us and you know it is just it is what it is and Sam is Sam and that's all we've ever viewed him as that's amazing Sam do you feel that autism has given you any unique advantages or insights in your career and in your hobbies uh yeah I would say I'm very creative I would say I'm very be able to write because of it. And I'd also say that I get to do some amazing, um, I would say amazing experiences because of the autism, whether that be working a soundboard for a local wrestling show or work for Casper or help out Casper kids. Yeah, that's what exactly what I was going to say, you know, without autism, he wouldn't be Sam. Or meet amazing, or these amazing people. Yeah, the journey that he's gone down, he wouldn't be able to do that. And I, I think it, it, for his podcast, if people look at his website, we have a tab that says guests. Sam's mission really for guests a lot of times is to find people who have broken down barriers and that that has a lot of success with autism. So, you know, you have so a couple of his interviews, Armani Williams, Austin Riley, they're, they're NASCAR drivers yeah. with, with autism. And the thing is, though, he, he kind of doesn't like the basic skills of tying their own shoes. It's yeah. kind of... Yeah, they can't, uh, I don't know, did Austin, get, Austin said he couldn't tie his shoe. You know, Austin is in his 20s, he can't tie his shoe, but he gets behind a wheel of a race car and straps in and he wins races. And so, you know, there's that success because he has autism, because of the hyper focusing. I'm trying to think. We I don't have, like shoelaces either, though, because my shoes are this. <laughs> yeah, Velcro all the way. No, not Velcro. They're, not, they're oh. shoes that have laces. Yeah. Um, but we've been trying to think of who else we've had, you know, NASCAR, not NASCAR, um, MMA fighters with autism. And really? They have, oh yeah, they and have Down syndrome. Down syndrome. They have their own, their own rituals and routines to be able to get into that ring um, and do that. So yeah, it, it's, it's all around I, I us. They kick their heads off, may I add. Yeah, she, Serena De Jesus uh, fights in Vegas and she wins fights. I mean, I wouldn't want to mess with her. She's <laughs> she's tough. and you're and you're a blue belt type one though <laughs> i still wouldn't mess with her she's wow. um, she's so if you look at those guests that's the common theme you know we have we have a friend who's blind who has kayaked the grand canyon four times blind and he's a living example of he's a legend a legend i mean he's successful but you know so that's the kind of people that we we seek is are people that are doing incredible things, but you know society says they're disabled, but I don't think so. <laughs> try and try again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That doesn't sound like disabled to me. That's incredible, especially the MMA thing. I didn't know that. We love MMA. That's really uh, cool. You'll have to look her up. Her name is Serena De Jesus, and she right or G Money Garrett uh, Polo. Holev Garrett he's out of is he in Michigan I think so and she lives in Vegas but she is whew, she's tough she's, she's they're both amazing. tough yeah even even uh how can I, I don't want to say for a little because that's just mean but um for someone his size he's he can he has bigger fists he's G-Money let's put it that way G-Money is tough he's a very sweet guy yeah I'm gonna have to look them up that's awesome Well, I really appreciate you all sharing this with me. And I guess my last question is, do you have any upcoming podcast episodes or anything else that you'd like to promote? I guess the next episode's coming out. um, Next episode's coming out tomorrow. And we'll be speaking in Canada and Orlando in May. Yeah, we have have a, um, trying to think, because he's got several. (laughs) We're trying to keep it keep it straight in my mind. It's all on our calendars, but he has a a podcast 
let's see, what is it, Sam? The, in Orlando, the, the podcast speaking engagement in May, and then we will actually travel to Orlando, um, Canada at the beginning of May. So that's coming up and we actually will get to um, middle May. Middle of May. We actually get to speak with Dr. Grandin and she's the keynote speaker and will speak uh, or he speaks at kind of a different time. But we get to like go to dinner with her. We just planned that yes last night and I'm we haven't met her in person. We've talked to her many, many times over the phone and on FaceTime. She's become quite a mentor to Sam. And so we get to do that. And then in what's in June? Nothing. Nothing in June. July, Bloomington, Bloomington, Indiana, uh, August, potentially Dallas, Texas, and then September, Indianapolis, Indiana is what he has booked right now. Via virtual. For conferences. Yeah. Wow. You guys are busy. And I'm so jealous of dinner with Temple. Oh my gosh. I want to meet her so bad. We had a gala that we had planned for eight months. Um, You know, it took a village to make it happen. But I think we had attendance of about 400 yesterday and we had a big silent auction. Everything was bid on, um, bought except for two items. We had a merchandise booth. We had um, an all abilities choir come in and sing. Uh, The room looked just incredible. And then of course we had Dr. Grandin speak. I spoke for a little bit, Sam spoke and then Dr. Grandin. So it was a it's a really beautiful night, but we've got some, we've got some more events coming up. So absolutely. We'll talk to you guys anytime you want to. Well, it's been so great to chat with both of you. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having us. Uh, we really, really loved it and appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. With a good, good luck with the future. Yeah. Same to you. I look forward to chatting again. Us too.